the broken promise. One of the nurses coming on duty for the day shift saw Big Mo standing near the building watching the sunrise. She remembered he was the man who yesterday had brought a little girl to the hospital with a snake bite. From the window of the building, she watched Mo as he went back into the hospital. Something still puzzled her. Where had she seen him before? All through the day, she tried to remember. Then it flashed into her mind. The tiny baby wrapped in a light blanket, the spirit shrine, the house on the hill. Could it be the same? Hastily putting the pile of linens on the shelf, the nurse went and asked to speak to the mission lady. Are you sure it is Big Mo, she asked. The child, the little child, may I see her? The lady noted the excitement, the expectancy in the nurse's manner. Of course you may see her, said the lady. She is asleep, but her daddy is watching over her, waiting for her to awake. Oh, said the nurse, I couldn't go in there now, not when he is there. I promised I would never see the child again. But I must see her. She is my own little girl. The lady put her arm around the nurse and said, Sit down, Risa, and tell me about it. I would like to hear the whole story, if you would care to tell it. The nurse told her story from the very beginning. But I am a Christian now, said Risa, and I no longer believe in the spirits and their curses. Would it be right for me to break my promise and see my little girl? Would it be right? Because you now know the spirits no longer have control over those who put their trust in the God in, in heaven, I see no reason why you should be held to that promise, said the lady. But on the other hand, Big Mo might not understand. He has gone through so much for the little girl. Perhaps it would be better for him if you wait for a while. Soon he will go to the dining room for breakfast. You may look in and see her then. Or I can send a note with him to the doctor right now if you wish. The doctor will keep him busy for a few minutes. Thank you, said Risa as she went back to her duties. Anxiously she waited, her heart beating rapidly. The mission lady soon stood at the door beckoning to her. She hesitated a moment. Are you sure it is not wrong for me to see her? asked Risa. I do want to see my little girl. My heart still loves her, though we are strangers. Come, urged the lady. I am sure it is all right. Let us go to her bed. Tears came into Risa's eyes as she looked down at the sleeping child. Very gently she touched the little one's hair, her small brown hand, her soft cheek. Risa wondered what her eyes were like, how her voice sounded. All the wondering and longing of the past few years welled up within her. She leaned over and kissed the warm little forehead. How I wish that she might learn to love Jesus too, Risa whispered. It will come in time, I am sure, said the lady. We must trust and pray. I would let you be in charge of her today, but I feel sure Big Mo will not leave the hospital without her. If he should, I will let you know. I will go now and sleep for a few hours, but if you need me, I will come. She squeezed Risa's hand and left the room. For several minutes, Risa stood beside the bed, crying softly. Then she slipped out of the room and motion for the nurse Netta to come over. Mo would soon finish his breakfast and return to the sleeping child.